Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen, and I am here with another special guest, and his name is Eric Degatti. Did I got it right? That right? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, okay. good guess. <laughs> Should have asked about that. That's what I forgot to ask about at the beginning. Okay. Um, Eric has spent twenty years plus years in the fitness industry. He's been a coach, a trainer, an instructor. Um, he has pioneered, is that past tense or, or continuing, a unique approach to client assessment? Always continuing, every day. Okay, there you go. Um, performance enhancement and injury prevention, all of which I know that I myself and my... Uh, my audience are very interested in. So sorry, I'm getting myself back into the picture here. Um, and Eric travels around the world, teaching and speaking to trainers, coaches, and therapists from such prestigious organizations as the uh, Functional Movement Systems, which sounds very interesting. I've never heard of them. Um, Mount Sinai Hospital, um, New York University Medical. I assume that's their medical school. Yes, right. the Rusk yeah. Institute. Yeah. Okay. And the Navy SEALs, U.S. Army. Um, so these other two look like they're something in New Jersey, but I don't know what they stand for. Um, Nike, uh, Frank Glazer Clinics, the Mayo Clinic. Um, multiple major universities and you have also been in the new york times bestseller the four hour body by tim ferris which i think we've all heard of and some of That's us very have, cool experience i bet i bet that'd be inter very interesting to hear about um i've listened to him I used to listen to his podcast a lot over the okay. last few years yeah so an in interesting guy um, and you're also on a number of advisory boards. Yes. A lot of different kinds of, of places. And um, your, your clients, your trained clients are also a very interesting list, which is an Olympic gold medalist. You don't have to tell me who it was. Um, Gatorade and New Jersey Players of the Year, All-Americans, National Champions, World Series Champions, and Pro Bowl athletes that's quite a list so um wow and training consultant to all kinds of different kinds of teams new york islanders or hockey players and detroit lions washington redskins miami dolphins my goodness okay like this goes on and on <laughs> very accomplished so thank you i really appreciate you coming on the podcast thanks for having me so why don't we, we talk about, we can start kind of on a general level and kind of you know, go down into the detail as it comes up. But what, what are you, what do you see as the, well, first off, what are the biggest keys to health and wellness? And then which are the ones that people tend not to even see or hear about or learn about that they should? Okay. Um, there's, there's usually three big things that I talk about. And, and um, the, the, the first one, obviously, because of what I do and have the most direct impact on is move, right? And mm -hmm. what does that mean? And uh, most people have gotten under the assumption over the last 30, 40 years of what that means is I have to sign up for some gym where I go in and I get on these specialized machines and I have to do uh, this, this um, strict programming of of going through these machines. And, and then I get on another machine with blinking lights that tells me how many calories I burn and how far I went. And that's what my day is. And for people who are not, um, you know, like myself, who, who just kind of live and thrive in the gym, it's extremely boring. And that's why my industry is failing miserably. And people don't understand moving is, is never been that um, up until recently. Um, and so I always talk about when I teach is that if I were to go back in time and i tell physical therapists and, and and personal trainers and you say let's say you go back in time 200 years and try to explain 
what you do for a living to someone. And they think you're, you're, out, of, you're out of your mind you're saying, well, what do you do? Well, I help people move. Well, what do you mean they don't move? They, well, how do they get through life? Well, they, they sit all day. Well, how do they sit all day and survive? Well, they get paid to sit all day. Well, it, it like this very confusing thing that doesn't make any sense to someone a couple hundred years ago. And yeah, so we have, <laughs> we have declined so far physically um, yeah. that we've forgotten that just fundamental movements mm -hmm. as basic as walking, going up and down stairs, being able to, to lift the groceries in and out of the, the car. Those are those simple things are every convenience we've, we've gained over the last hundred years has been basically to have us move less and, and do less physical activity. And so mm -hmm. we need to get people moving. And then one of the things we need to do is make sure they, they, we always think about how much we move instead of how well we move. Um, and we can go deeper down that rabbit hole. But yeah. the first kind of big chunk is just getting people moving, getting to move really well, because we don't move well right now as a society. Uh, the second piece is um, what I call fuel. All right. And fuel is what you intake. And that, that could be uh, the most obvious in terms of your nutrition. Um, but it also means your intake as far as something as simple as is how you breathe. That's how we get mm. energy into our body. And that's how we digest. Talking about fuel in terms of what you put in your head and, and whether that's uh, being bombarded with social media or, or 24 hour news or the people yeah. in, in places that you hang around, all those things have an impact on our, on our health. Mm. Um, and then the last piece is something that we don't do enough of is reset. Reset is, is, is the big piece of how we sleep and how we uh, recover um, so we can come back and do this again the next day. And we have a, uh, a society, like I said, that's in physical decline. They don't move. They don't eat well. They don't fuel themselves well. And what they get fueled on mentally is, is, is really uh, uh, pretty sad at best. And then they're so exhausted and there's no reset within there. And so um, they just all that kind of piles on top of each other and makes for a pretty nasty mess of, of what our health and wellness is, you know, in 2021. Yeah, no, I, I would totally, totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, I think it's we become the um, what's the easiest way. And society, here's, the, here's, right? here's the thing is that, that there's, uh, and there's a, you know, I recommend a lot of books, uh, cause yeah. I'm a complete audible junkie. And since I'm on the road a lot, I listen to a lot of audio books and I'll probably crank through, you know, 16, 18 books a year easily. And, and wow. uh, a book that I just finished that I love is a book called uh -huh. the comfort crisis. And it talks about how uh -huh. we just don't have the ability to get uncomfortable anymore. Yeah. And whether it's just the matter of, of something as simple as temperature. Right. And we, if we get out of 72 degrees, a click one way or the other, we, we don't handle it well. Yeah. Um, and ironically, one of the things they're finding is one of the best things to boost, boost health is uh -huh. to, is to get into extreme temperatures is, uh -huh. is that one of the best ways to build brown fat, which is the healthy fat within that protects our organs uh -huh. and also helps to drive our metabolism is cold exposure. And just something that's cold mm -hmm. enough that it feels a little uncomfortable, whether it's a, uh -huh. whether it's a cold shower, whether it's an out for a brisk walk out in the cold. Um, uh -huh. And then the same thing goes on the opposite end where there's huge benefits being found from using something like a sauna, uh, where they found yeah. just as much benefit from using the sauna as, as some uh, cardiovascular exercise. So that's just oh. one example of how yeah. we, we're kind of yeah. um, dying at what we call a simmering six, meaning uh -huh. we never get to 10. We never get yeah. to zero. We just kind of simmer ourselves to death at six. And so we don't get in the extremes of challenging ourselves physically. We don't mm -hmm. push ourselves mentally. And so because of that, we never get out of our comfort zone. And, and that's where all the good stuff is on the other side of that. That's how we get more fit. That's how we get more healthy. That's, that's basically how yeah. our, our, our physiology works, right? Is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. every cell, it has one job. It's to survive another day. And so because of that, we have these natural mechanisms that if it were to get cold, I'd shiver to warm up. If it were to get hot, right. I'd, I'd sweat to cool down. Well, mm -hmm. if I lift up you know, the weights behind me, my body says, oh my gosh, we're going to keep doing that. I'm going to have to get a little stronger. I'm going to have to get your nervous system a little more uh, mm -hmm. uh, efficient. If I go out for a run, I'm going to have to build more oxygen delivery to my tissues. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to build more endurance. And, and uh -huh. so if we never get out of that, that comfort zone at all, we basically just gradually disintegrate. Interesting. Yeah. No, that all, that all makes a lot of sense. That all makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so and, those are the big three. And then we can just keep going down rabbit holes within those three. And it really uh -huh. doesn't depend. It really doesn't matter whether I'm working with um, 
a uh, weekend warrior who's uh, in their, you know, fifties or sixties, who still wants to play golf or tennis on the weekends, yeah. or it's the, the professional baseball player that, you know, that I had in here an hour ago that mm -hmm. is looking to perform the best. We still start with the same big rocks and then we can go down mm -hmm. to the, the, a little bit, you know, uh, more granular if we need mm -hmm. to. Um, but if we don't check the big boxes first, it doesn't matter which cohort you fall in. If yeah. you're not resetting and getting good sleep and, and getting good nutrition and moving well, all the other, the, 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 the little life hacks or, or fitness hacks uh -huh. don't really work all that well. Uh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that. That's why people hurt themselves, right? They, they all of a sudden decide, oh, okay, I got to go get fit. And they start, they, they think that they can start where maybe they used to be 10 years ago. That's, right. that's a big mistake. And then also, um, and there's, there's kind of different categories and, mm -hmm. and it kind of talks to a bigger conversation I'll get to in a minute, but there's, there's generally what you find as people get older, there's two categories. There's one, there's people that are scared to death to move, even though they probably can, even though they move better than they think they can. Mm -hmm. Those people are super safe. They wrap themselves in bubble wrap, but they never challenge themselves to get any better. And so they gradually break down. Uh -huh. Now, the other people who are actually even a little more dangerous are the ones you talked about that think yeah. they can still do what they did 20 years ago and don't realize that. And then they're going to go out and they're going to go for a two mile run or they're going to go out and just jump into some fitness class with no, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. preface to, to what they need to, to be in there. And they're going to hurt themselves as well. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I say right now where we're in an interesting time where we're at the crossroads between fragile and broken. We have that mm -hmm. first group that I talk about that are very fragile. And because mm -hmm. of that, they keep getting worse and keep decaying because they never challenge themselves to, to build any fortitude or resiliency or strength. Mm -hmm. Then you have the other group where, um, you know, they're challenging themselves and people are looking for challenge. And this is something that that has really happened over the last 20 years, as much as we've uh, lost our physicality in one way, where especially with, with COVID is just kind of put a, a, a spotlight on all of it, where now we're yeah. sitting at, at, at laptops, at dining room tables as workstations. Mm -hmm. And then we finish the day by ordering DoorDash and watching Netflix. <clears throat> the other part of society is dying for challenge. And the reason why I say that is because when I opened up my, my first facility in, in oh, you know, almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. is there, there wasn't uh, people going out and doing things like CrossFit. There weren't people doing things like um, these uh, extreme boot camps are going out and doing uh, these things like Tough Mudder and extreme uh, uh, obstacle course races. And they have become multi-million dollar industries. You, you, I, wow. you didn't have this many people where if, uh, you know, your local your mini triathlon, if you don't get up early in the morning, sign up for it, you won't get a spot because it's such huh. a demand for that stuff. And so you have this, this strange dichotomy of people who are not moving at all. And then you have people who are trying to do these really extreme things. The mm -hmm. problem is those people doing the real extreme things, they're sitting in a laptop and a workstation too all day. And they're going out and trying to challenge themselves and they're not really ready for it. So that group's broken and the other group's yeah. fragile. Here's the problem. They both go in for physical therapy or they go into the chiropractor. Uh -huh. And if they both get the same treatment, uh -huh. neither of them are getting what they need, right? right? And so because of that, we have people where um, the other thing that I say, if you look in a time machine, mm -hmm. is back when I opened my facility, we had, and we were uh, an upper middle class suburban area that had one physical therapy clinic in town. I knew the guy's name and uh -huh. uh, with one physical therapist and one chiropractor in town. Okay. Now you can't drive 10 feet without seeing a me mega physical therapy clinic, chiropractic, re uh, a, a physical rehab center, a massage therapist, a uh, chiropractor, some sort of recovery center. Uh -huh. There's one on every corner and they're all filled to the brims because we are so broken physically. Mm -hmm. um, and we're taking these reactive means of breaking it, uh, fixing it after it breaks. Um, but we're not proactively saying, well, how do I stop this from happening in the first place? And yeah. so- um, we're not, we're not doing a good job as an industry of educating people on what that involves. And we're making mm -hmm. people kind of dependent on, well, I go and I get treated and I feel a little better, but a day later I feel, but this is pretty much the same. So I guess I got to go back again two more times this week. And that's mm -hmm. not really what we should be doing. There should be some level of empowerment. And so it's first getting people to not be intimidated 
by movement. Mm -hmm. It could be something as simple saying, okay, I need you to go for a walk. Um, and people say, well, that, how can that, you know, how many calories am I burning? How many, you know, how many steps do I need to take and say, well, if you take, you know, a walk around the building, that's, that's maybe a thousand more steps than you would have taken the day before. And so because of that, that's going to create a change. And mm -hmm. so we need to be able to do that. And, and that's probably the number one thing that's underrated is just going out for a walk. And then with that, it's not just the calories you burn, but it's also all the other things that go with that in mm -hmm. terms of the exposure to the outdoors, in terms of um, all the other things that, that, that come in line in terms of the fitness things that, that you don't see in the mirror right away, but will yeah. gradually accumulate over time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's, that's, that's one of the most easy entry points for people to get into. Um, mm -hmm. The, the second thing that I think is a huge superpower that is underrated is strength training. And so people, when they hear strength training, the problem is, is they get intimidated because they think they're going to turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger or they, they imagine all these people dropping big weights like you see behind me. And right. that's not necessarily what we mean by strength training. Strength training uh -huh. could be just your own body weight. Strength training could be what you're getting and it's relative to the individual. It's, it's just a matter of physical challenge. It could be a yoga class. It could be yeah. um, something as simple as, as just some general calisthenics is enough that can create uh, enough load bearing that can create strength in, in the bones, can create strength in your tendons, can create all mm -hmm. these different things. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not sitting in a machine pushing, you know, mindlessly back and forth. Right. Um, so, mm -hmm. so strength training is, is a superpower that when you look at some of the research, if, if we took everything that strength training and exercise could do, mm -hmm. and we put it in pill form, you would, mm -hmm. people, it would sell off the shelves. Right. Because there's so like it's so unbelievable what it can do. Uh -huh. um, the problem is it's a tough pill to swallow. Right. It uh -huh. requires that I may have to change uh, uh -huh. and sacrifice a few things in my life. It means that I may have to get up a little bit earlier. It means I may have to not sit on the couch for as long and watch a few less Netflix shows or because I'm going to dedicate 20, 30 minutes extra to, to this activity, which mm -hmm. means something else has to get. Um, right. And so because of that, it's a tough pill to swallow. And we, we have a large portion of our society that that's inactive. I think it's part of it because they're uneducated. Part of it is because they're intimidated by it. And it's because their picture of what fitness is, isn't really what it should be. Um, and, it, and there's some basic things that could go a long way and that, mm -hmm. that have um, things way more beyond than what fitness is always mm -hmm. thought to be about weight right. loss and what I see in the mirror, when people don't understand, like one of the, when you look at research, one of the strongest predictors of mortality is your grip strength. Uh -huh. When they look at the, when they test grip strength, it's one of the, because it's a sign of how robust you are. It's a sign of, oh, of, okay. of basically how well you can handle things and your overall strength uh -huh. is very well represented in just looking at your grip strength. And so that tells me how robust you are. Can you get up and down the stairs? Can you get in and out of a chair easily? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because the more challenging that becomes, well, mm -hmm. the less you want to do it. And you find less reasons to want to go up and down the stairs. You find mm -hmm. less reasons to want to get up and out mm -hmm. of a chair mm -hmm. or go for mm -hmm. that walk because it gets yeah. to the point where it's, it's difficult and it becomes difficult to uncomfortable and uncomfortable becomes painful. And then once it becomes painful, if you don't have some sort of clinical intervention, it's not going to become unpainful. And so uh, you need some sort of coaching or, or therapy to get you out of that kind of pit to get you out of that. And then once you get there, where we unfortunately leave off with a lot of the therapy and coaching is we need to get to the point where you can become an independent and it becomes part of your day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think the other thing, you know, if you take it the next step further as well as people get even older is that they get other than getting the sun in their face, um, they, they get more isolated. And as they get more isolated, you know, from being around other people, their, their friends move away, their friends die, right? Um, they, they tend to stop doing a lot of the social things, which, which included walking, right? Or, or getting out of the house or going here, or going there, that, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I think, especially as you say, with COVID, I think that that just kind of 
exacerbated the whole problem is that people started to become afraid of going out. So I saw an interesting thing happen with COVID in my industry um, mm. in that, um, and it's still completely turned on its ear, by the way. Um, yeah. But what, what I've seen is the old type of thinking of what a gym was. Uh, mm. The typical where I always say it's not really, you're not buying anything. You're basically getting an equipment rental is what yeah. you're getting. Yeah. I'll spend X amount a month and I get to use your equipment for however many hours a week I decide. It's mm -hmm. an equipment rental. There's really no, unless you know what you're doing or know and have an exact plan. That's why 60 to 70% of the people that join a gym will drop out after three months. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what has happened is there's there's a, a, a segment of my industry that is serving that population mm. that is 40 and over, that is not so much concerned about looking great in a bathing suit on Instagram. They're concerned with that they want to be able to not reside to a rocking chair. They want to yeah. not give, they're going to go down kicking and that they want to yeah. be able to, uh, to do the things they want to do and want to be able to ski and play tennis and play golf and uh, do all these things. Uh -huh. And so these uh, small group fitness that are done really well, I have friends who, who are doing that, who are booming and they're wow. booming because not only are they serving this population well, but they're serving as a piece of community that mm -hmm. now people have lost because they don't have yeah. um, they don't have another space. And what I mean by that is like the, the guy who created Starbucks said he wanted to become a third space. We have our home, we have our work, and then his third space was someplace where we can go and we can feel there's a community to it. Mm -hmm. Well, people have lost that second space because they don't have yeah. they don't have any physical interaction other than through a computer screen like we're doing. Right. And so if you have a good community, these places are busting at the seams because now you have your friends and I have, I have colleagues who are doing a tremendous job of this where they now feel a sense of obligation, not mm -hmm. only to themselves, but to the people that are in that 10 o'clock class with them that, you know, Hey, Susan's yeah. not here. I hope everything's okay. Like that, yeah. that is something yeah. that is yeah. happening now and they're doing a really good job of it. If you find the right place. Um, yeah. But the, the, the challenge is that first step, right? The challenge is getting, yeah. you know, uh, up and getting over the intimidation of signing up. I, I can't tell you many stories I've heard of people who drove to the gym 10 times and sat in the parking lot before they had the guts to get out of the car and actually sign up, right? Because yeah. of the intimidation factor. Yeah. And I talk about this with, with professionals to say we have to understand and appreciate that. And mm -hmm. so... The, the, the approach needs to be in that what I always try to do with my coaching, it doesn't matter whether you're a professional athlete or whether you're, you're somebody who's that intimidated person sitting mm -hmm. in the parking lot, is mm -hmm. to say, we need to accomplish, is, this is really just about habits, okay? And there's mm -hmm. some other great books, you know, um, on, on habit building, uh, such as The Power of Habit. Um, and there's, there's another one that I'm blanking out, it'll hit me before the end, but, but basically looking at you need to make this part of who, who you are and mm. make this part of your non-negotiable habits that this is what I do in a day. Mm. And so everybody who's made a significant change in their, in their health and their fitness and their well-being has had to kind of redefine who they are a little bit, meaning that if you're the, oh, I'm not a gym person, oh, I'm not an exercise person, and you build this self-fulfilling prophecy of what you are. Whereas yeah. if you know some people you talk about say, oh, she's the woman who walks around the lake every day. She almost never misses, right? Yeah. And so could we, if I sat down and did a complete hour evaluation, look and say, is that the best program for that individual? I could probably come up with something that physiologically might be better, mm -hmm. but if she's not going to do it, it doesn't matter. And That's I'd rather take right, the, the program, the, the program <laughs> yeah. well done is much better than the perfect program that's never done. And yeah. so developing that, that non-negotiable habit of what you do, um, and this is just part of your every day, is that I start every day with a walk, or I end every day with a walk, mm -hmm. or I, I do my 10-minute mobility routine every single day, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that becomes, once you get through the drudgery of the first couple of weeks, and that first 21 to 28 days, and you've committed that this is now part of you, that just becomes second nature and you don't mm -hmm. think about it. And it does, you don't think about the 10 or 20 minutes that you're dedicating. Yeah. The industry that has gotten this the best is the dental industry. 
No one has ever complained. You know, I don't have enough time in the day because I have, I have to spend five minutes every day brushing my teeth in the morning and five minutes at night. It just takes up too much of my day. Yeah, but it is yeah. the one industry that we sold you that this habit has to be done, mm -hmm. has to be done regularly twice a, twice a day. Mm -hmm. No one mm -hmm. questioned it. And it's not because it's broken. It's because we're going to do this to hope that it doesn't break. And yeah. no one questioned to say, well, what if I don't brush my teeth? What could happen? Because yeah. the reality is maybe your teeth won't fall out of your head. But no one wants to take that chance. But the yeah. exercise yeah. industry has it's not true. done that. The, the, and so we, we've let everything become reflexive and reactive. And so because of that, we try to worry about losing 10 pounds after we've gained 20. We try to worry about how do I make my knee not hurt after we've already hurt it, um, as opposed to saying, if I could just move a little better, fuel myself with the right things, both mentally, uh, nutritionally, um, environmentally, and then if I can give my son, some, myself some time to reset, um, and that could just be sitting quiet outside for, for 10 minutes. It could be just mm. some deep breathing. Mm. It could be uh, five minutes of meditation that the impact that that can have over the long term cumulatively can be incredibly mm. impressive. So yeah. um, if you take these little bites and say, I'm just going to make this my habit for this month, I'm just going to make sure that this is my habit for this month. And then mm. once that is not so much a chore, then I can add another habit. But mm. like you said, if I'm going to say, well, you know, we've all done it where we, we watch Rocky and we get up at, and we want to get up at six in the morning and drink our eggs and run five miles and, and do a thousand pushups. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, you know? And so, uh, it, it, it just takes enough that challenges that our body says, Oh my gosh, you're going to keep doing this. I'm going to have to come a little better tomorrow. And yeah. so, um, also understanding that the magic isn't happening here, right? The magic is actually happening the other 23 hours of the day. And that's the first thing I also explain to clients when they walk in the door is to say that I am just providing you the seeds, you provide the soil. And so if I plant seeds on concrete, they don't go anywhere. That the, if you, and that means in that concrete would mean you're the person that gets terrible sleep, that gets terrible nutrition, that's constantly stressed out. Those seeds aren't gonna grow in that soil. Um, and so you have to provide the right soil and the better the soil, the less maintenance you need. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's a matter of being aware of things, the, uh, the impact of your sleep, the impact of your breathing, the impact of your nutrition, of your mental stressors, and being able to manage those three big buckets is, is the big key of, of establishing those habits and creating that environment where those habits can actually make an impact. Yeah, no, that's um, <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all, all totally, totally true. And I, and I, I do get that. I mean, we, my husband and I go out for a walk every morning before we even have breakfast, you know, um, except the last couple of days when it was raining. But even then we got out for one yesterday in between the rain. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, I'm always amazed with people who, um, and, and I think we've all done it as well, so I shouldn't just make it sound like it's people outside of myself, but we talk about, um, oh yeah, I need to do this. Oh yeah, I need to do that, right? We make lists. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get to the gym. Oh, I'm gonna find a gym. Um, and and we just, I, I understand totally what you're talking about with habits, right? You have to get that, that habit, you have to get that into your bones. <laughs> um, but I, I am always amazed at how many, at, well, actually I'm amazed also on the other end of, of the people who do, they're so driven to do things that they go, totally off the other the deep end which you mentioned as well and end up hurting themselves um, especially if they used to do they used to do a lot of exercise or or athletics or whatever when they were either younger or even if it was only like five years ago and they try and start where they were instead of you know building and back I, up. I think 
Another thing that's a big misconception is like, if you were to come in and see uh, some of the clients that I work with that are, that are a, a little bit older, right. And you were to see um, a guy that I have who's in his mid sixties, who um, still does many triathlons and still mm-hmm. does, you know, does mm-hmm. multiple five yeah. uh, Ks and five mile races a year. Um, or another one that's in that bracket, who's, who's an avid tennis player plays tennis and and then skis during the winter. And then another one, who's a, a woman who's a black belt in Taekwondo and as well as plays tennis. And so if you were to look at them and you see what kind of level of fitness they're in and the things that they do in the gym, you would assume that, oh, these people are are like you say, they're, there's just, just these absolutely driven individuals that wake up every morning, just, you know, to seize the day. And I'm going to tell you, they're not, they're the same as, as we are. They yeah. wake up and they don't feel like going to the gym sometimes. And they, and they, and they go out and they don't feel like having a salad and yeah. they want to have something else. And they, and they are not flawless. It's just kind of become their why for what they, why they do it is way stronger than the why they don't. And so yes. they, they, and so it's not about the how or the what their why is pretty much driven because they can't imagine a world where they can't do those things. And they, when they look at people who are in their demographic and, and they see that they, you know, that they can't do all these things and they're thinking, and they say, I don't want a life without this, this type mm-hmm. of, of yeah. freedom that I can mm-hmm. go and do those types of things if I want to do them. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that they don't get up in the morning, just they can't wait to get to the gym right. or they get up in the morning, just craving a, a salad. They yeah. wake up and they have to just, they decide that I'm going to have to yeah. be a little bit uncomfortable for a portion of my day to allow myself the freedom to, to do the things I want to do mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. And I, and I, 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 I totally remember that feeling. I haven't been doing those kinds of things <laughs> for a while, but, um, but yeah, no, def- definitely, you know, saying, Oh God, I really don't want to go to the gym. Oh, I really don't want to go out and do this other thing. Yep. I, re- I remember that very well. <laughs> and then going yeah. up and get and doing it anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you, it, it, no one ever went home regretting it. Right? Oh no. You um, feel so yeah, good so, afterwards. You feel so good. So it's, so it's just got to get through that a little bit of discomfort and you got to have a strong why to do that. If your why yeah. is to just, you know, to, to drop five pounds, that's not strong enough. If that was no. the case, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic. Um, the, the why has to be a little bit stronger. The why yeah. has to be that I want to be able to play with my grandkids. The why has to be yeah. that, um, you know, I, I, you know, go, I love going out and kayaking or paddle boarding and I don't want to have to give that up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that, you know, you have to kind of see that, am I going to be okay just settling for less? And uh-huh. so that's unfortunately what a lot of people do. They just make this yeah. assumption of, of that I'm of a certain age and I shouldn't be able to do certain things. And I can give for every excuse you have for that, I can give you five people that, that I know or have worked with that, defi- that, that, that yeah. you know, fly in the face of that and say, mm-hmm. that's nonsense. You don't, that's, that's crazy. I have people that, that can do, that can come in a gym and that can deadlift and that can do pull-ups and that can do all yeah. these things. And it, it's 60 plus, and that's, part of what they do. And it, it's not yeah. that they, it's easy and it's not that they love doing it, but they can do it because that affords them a lot of freedoms. And so yes. um, it doesn't mean that it can't be done. It doesn't mean you can start there tomorrow, but it, you can certainly get there if you give yourself the, the, the allowance and, and the, enough of a why to do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, so what are the kinds of things that um, for the people listening who haven't been to a gym for a while or haven't, you know, they've really been very lax in following the program that they used to do. And, mm-hmm. and it, it may be because of COVID, it may not be, you know, I mean, there's, there's plenty of other reasons that, that people stop doing things. Um, okay. So, so what, what do people really need to be on the lookout for other than, you know, just picking up and trying to do exercises with, um, you know, dumbbells or something like that, that are, that are 20 pounds to start out with. <laughs> okay. So, um, walking's an easy one. That's number one, the, provided that the climate and, and your, your surroundings allow for it. Uh-huh. Um, do you, 
two is is well with, with walking is that is that like just as long as you get out or is it walking um, a little faster or is it maybe you know going a little faster and then slowing down for a little while and then going faster and you know what's the because walking is one of those things that most people can at least hopefully mm -hmm. get out and do mm -hmm. or just walk around the house you know yeah so uh it depends on your where you're at if you're okay. if we just make it simple call it be, yeah. uh, beginner intermediate advanced uh -huh. in the very beginner just go out and do something and each day try to cover a little bit more ground or cover okay. the same ground in a little less time right okay. you, those, those are your yeah. kind of two simple options uh -huh. if you're that intermediate person um then you want to get to the point where it may be difficult to have a full conversation um mm -hmm. where you can you can uh still talk we still talk a little bit but it gets a little bit uh, you know, uh, hesitated yeah. because you're you're challenging yourself a little bit more. And then once you get to the to where you can get uh, past that little bit of discomfort, then we can start talking about adding a little speed or adding some hills mm. or those sorts mm. of things, um, or all or or, or or just pieces of of walking to start with. The yeah. the okay. other go to that I think is very underappreciated because there's a lot of misunderstanding about it is is yoga, um, and that yeah, there's a reason it's been around for thousands of years because it's pretty good stuff it's it's um, most yeah. of the exercise we see today is just rip offs of, of yoga i steal from it every day and so yeah. um, being able to do yoga is going to build strength it's going to help build balance mm. it's going to help build mobility and it doesn't have to be you know jumping into an, an advanced class um, in a room full of people you can get the, the best and worst thing that happened to fitness is the internet and on the plus side is that we can there's some great you free resources that you can get or for minimal cost, you can get great beginner yoga classes that mm -hmm. you can follow. And then, um, like I said, if you can search out, there are some facilities that are doing a great job of, of catering to this population because mm -hmm. I know my grandparents, they just, you know, they got to a certain age and they pretty much resided themselves to that this is what you know, aging is and that we don't expect much of out of, out of ourselves physically mm -hmm. after a certain mm -hmm. age, whereas my parents, not so much. And then this generation, even less. And mm. so because of that, there's a huge demand of people that are that are 40, 50, 60 years old that really want to stay dynamic and active. And yeah. so there are some facilities that are doing a great job of serving that that demand, whether it be mm -hmm. yoga, whether it be small group fitness or personal training that 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 specialize on that niche. And you can find those people once you get to the point where now I'm starting to move a little bit and I feel comfortable. The the other two big things that I would say to that are underappreciated is is one is balance, especially as as mm -hmm. uh, people get older. Um, you know, that one fall that puts you in the hospital can completely derail your health for for years, if not forever. And so something as simple as is uh, just doing some simple balance exercise, whether it's just balancing on a single leg and holding a chair or a wall mm -hmm. next to you, mm -hmm. or what I, I use here is I get, I, I have some eight foot two by fours and we just use it as a balance beam and oh. we just walk up and down the balance beam back and forth. Beam. And what that does is, as far as for stability, not just in the foot and ankle, but all the way up through your body and creating better control, mm -hmm. um, is ex extremely empowering. So uh, any type of balance drills are, are extremely important for building lower body strength as, as well as everyday function. And then the other uh, thing that, that is completely overlooked, which is crazy, is breathing. And breathing can have a huge impact on our, on our nervous system, on our well-being, and how we breathe. <clears throat> uh, whether you breathe through your nose or breathe through your mouth will have a huge impact on your health. There's a great book called Breath by James Nestor, where he talks about the impact of mm -hmm. mouth yeah. breathing versus nasal breathing. Mm -hmm. um, or even the difference of if, by if you take six deep <clears throat> diaphragmatic breaths, you can actually lower your blood pressure. You can lower your heart rate, all these wow. sorts of things. So when we talk about the reset and being able to learn how to breathe deeply and just mm -hmm. being able to do that um, is extremely important. So now you start to mesh things together to say, okay, well, now if I go out for a walk and I can only breathe through my nose, it's going to have now you get a double whammy with that, right? Yeah. And now yeah. if I can go out and walk with friends and now I get the the impact of good fuel of, of that. So all of these things can kind of combine into, into uh, where it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes a, a smart application of some of these principles. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. I'm still stuck in the sun here. Um, 
<laughs> Every day it's different. Um, so I just had a question, now it's gone. Um, okay, so that, that there's, an, there's a question. What, what sorts of things are, are good you know, for your brain as well, right? Because the exercise isn't just for your arms and your legs and, and your heart, right? Mm -hmm. But um, are the, what kinds of things help in keeping your brain working well? There's a lot of research shows the impact of just general movement, extremely important. And then um, doing things uh, that, that challenge your nervous system, uh, mm. such, as, such as balance type drills are extremely okay. uh, helpful. Um, breathing helps uh, get, create oxygen within the brain. Obviously there's okay. certain things nutritionally that are, that are extremely impactful. Um, and then and being outside in terms of, uh, there's, there's things in terms of your visual, um, mm. uh, uh, in what you see, like being able to see a, a, a shoreline or being able to see uh, a mountain ridge has an, actually has an effect on our nervous system and our brain health. Um, oh, and that's wow. why we always feel more relaxed when we're, when we see that type of, uh, landscape, as opposed to staring at a cubicle or staring at, at a closed in area helps with eye health, helps with, with, with brain health as well as being able to see large vistas and being able to, to that's why getting outside huh. is, is extremely important with that. Um, there's a, there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's out of Stanford, who does a oh, lot okay. of work on, who's a, a neuroscientist who does a lot of great work out of Stanford and he has a podcast and he talks about a lot of these things um, as far as brain health and what we can do for that. Oh, okay. I'll have to, I'll have to look that up. Yeah. And interesting. It's funny because, I mean, some of these things I, I already do, you know, that you've, mm -hmm. that you've mentioned. I'm kind of like, oh, okay. Well, that, that's good. I'm not as quite as out of shape as, <laughs> as I could be. <laughs> Yeah. And then, and then the last piece, I guess, that we could share is that mm -hmm. we always think of what we can add, um, yeah. but sometimes we add by subtraction. And it's mm -hmm. a concept that, that I talk about when I teach called removing the negative. Um, it's kind of like if you came to me and you want to learn how to run faster, but you have a thumbtack in your shoe. Well, the first thing I have to do is take that out because all the coaching mm -hmm. isn't going to help you unless that, if that's still there. Yeah. And so like one of my mentors jokes about, you know, a guy walks into a nutritionist's office and he's got a glass of scotch in one hand, a cigarette in the other hand, and he wants to know what's the best type of essential fatty acids he can take. And well, let's first remove the negative first, or we're not going to get anywhere. And so sometimes that removing the negative is on the movement side, it's sitting less. It's, uh, it's uh, um, not doing things that are beating up your structure um, in terms of either poor movement or lack of movement mm -hmm. in terms of removing the negative from your nutrition. That's, there's a ton of stuff that, that we, that we take in that, that has yeah. poor effects on our, on our health that um, whether it's uh, sugar, whether it's um, processed foods or um, uh, things like that, if we take those out, sometimes it's the biggest thing you can do um, or from the, from the, um, the mental fuel of just, shutting off the news the world will go on if you don't know about it and so you'll be a much happier person without that with being able to shut those things down or even in terms of reset of being able to just go out and there's a great book by ryan holiday called stillness is the key and the impact of just being quiet on your health and your, your well-being um and being able to reset and remove the noise wherever that's coming from in your life um, removing the negative is, is just as impactful as, as anything that you're going to add. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 that makes, that makes perfect sense. You know, that's why meditation is so important for people. And meditation is easier now too. There's great apps yeah. like Headspace and Calm that you can get yeah. and they yeah. have a bunch of free ones you could try. And it's not as complex as you think you can set it for five minutes and you can sit at your car at lunch before you come back into the office, or you could do it, you know, for, for, uh, 10 minutes before you go to bed and it'll mm -hmm. lead you through the whole thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, it, and it, and it's funny because it's, it's again, one of those things where it's very easy to say, well, eh, I'm 
you know, if I take one day off, it's not a big deal. And then, and, then and, and it isn't a big deal in the grand it. scheme of things. No, yeah. no, um, no, it's not. Just but, like if you skip brushing your teeth one day, your teeth aren't going to fall out of your head, but don't make that your habit. But exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, um, so let's see. I think we talked about some of these other things that, um, about trying to remain injury free. I think we touched on that a bit mm -hmm. already. Um, and so it, it sounds to me, well, maybe I won't put words in your mouth. How about giving us kind of an, a wrap up of you know, the, the high points and, and what people really need to take away from, from our discussion today? Okay, so I'll just kind of go back to where we started with those three three big yeah. things. Is first, first is move and be able to move well. That means you need to have good mobility, um, that your body doesn't get in the way of itself, that you can touch your toes, that you can rotate right to left, that you can okay. uh, squat down and pick something up without without you know with still being able to get back up from there. That you can balance on on one foot. These little things are, are being able to move well before we worry so much about moving off and how many calories we burn or how many steps we went or how much weight we lifted. Um, so that would be that would be number one in terms of just getting moving. And you just got to challenge yourself uh, slightly outside of your comfort zone to where your body's going to have to come back a little bit better the next time for it. And whatever that that that, you know, the response is should be specific to whatever your goal is. If you want more endurance, you have to do things that build more endurance. If you want more strength, you have to do things that build more strength. Then the second piece is the fuel is to take inventory on what you're letting into your, into your eyes, into your ears and into your mouth mm -hmm. and to say, okay, uh, are these things serving me? And if not, I need to remove the negative first. And then once I've done some of that, what are some of the things that I could possibly add to replace that um, in establishing habits of, of how I eat, of the, the, the people, places and sights and sounds I surround myself with? um in 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 that regard and then in terms of reset of, of being able to take a carve out a piece of your day whether it's two minutes five minutes ten minutes of being able to just reset um and kind of reset whether it's just some deep breathing whether it's meditating and then the reset also being a big piece of that is sleep which i know is something that people mm. do not do well and they don't uh, and because of that that trickles into all the other areas and so uh, a great resource on sleep is a, a book called Why We Sleep by Dr. Yeah. Matthew Walker, um, which is incredibly uh, uh, eye-opening in terms of the impact that sleep can have on your overall uh, performance and, and well-being. So um, fuel, um, move, and reset. Good. That's good. People only need to remember three things. That's it. Start Thanks, with that, definitely. and then we can, get, we, can, we can get more granular if needed. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. And then they can worry about the details later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, and it's um. Well, thanks for having me. It's it was so much, such good information. Um, particularly, I mean, I I know even here there, in this in this area there aren't even as many gyms as there were before COVID. Some of them have even closed up, you know? So um, I think it's, it's important for people to know, even if they're not gonna go to a gym, that it's possible to stay healthy. We were a lot healthier a couple hundred years ago and there was no gym, so we don't need gyms. No, you're right. No, no, you're ab you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, and that's um, yeah. I was just talking to somebody yesterday about that having to do with food. You know that three hundred years ago, people ate what they had. They weren't running out and and finding all of these new things to eat <laughs> that we have these days. If you so, if you order it out of a window or if there's a cartoon on the box, it's probably not good for you. Um, very good point. Very good point. <laughs> and personally, we don't do either of those things. So 
that's a good um, start. Yes, yes, that that's that's a basic of our at least of our our lives and our diet. So for sure. So thank you again, and um, I really appreciate you coming on and and giving us so much good information. Was, um, Great. Well, thanks for having me. And if, and if anybody has questions, uh, they can reach out to me on my website. I actually have something because I do so many of these and go out and teach all over. Uh, uh, there's a section on my on my homepage called Ask Eric that if you have a question, okay. you just put it in there. It goes directly to my email and they can okay. find me through there. So just to go okay. to, to uh, ericdegatti.com and they can yep. do that through there. Okay. And I'll also post that um, in the show notes when the Excellent. show goes up. Look forward to your questions. So, Okay. Well, thank you. And I will just have to finish by saying that uh, we are not doctors and this is not medical advice. Um, it's good. It's a, it's good advice, but it's not medical advice. And if you're having any kind of a medical issue, please go and see your doctor or go to the emergency room, whichever happens to be the, the right level of problem you're having. And with that, I will say um, thank you again, and I will see everybody next week.